In the obsidian heart of the night where shadows whisper secrets, our tale begins. The tale of a man named John, an ordinary individual with an extraordinary fate. John, a night shift worker, is our unsuspecting protagonist, walking home from his job through a deserted street, under the haunting gaze of a full moon. The night was as black as pitch, pierced only by the spectral glow of the moon, a silent sentinel in the vast, velvet expanse. A chilling wind swept through the street, whispering tales of the unknown, rustling the leaves that lay scattered on the ground like forgotten memories. The air was thick with an eerie silence, broken occasionally by the distant hoot of an owl or the scurrying of nocturnal creatures. It was a scene that could have been lifted straight from a gothic novel. As John walked, his footsteps echoed in the solitude, each step a reminder of his isolation. His breath formed frosty clouds in the cold air, disappearing as quickly as they formed. His heart pounded in his chest, a rhythmic counterpoint to the eerie calm around him. The flickering street lamps cast long, dancing shadows that seemed to come alive, adding to the spectral atmosphere. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the inky darkness, a woman draped in a cloak as dark as the night itself, her face partially hidden by a hood. Her beauty was enchanting, yet otherworldly, her eyes glowed with an ethereal light. There was an aura of strangeness about her, a sense of mystery that seemed to defy the ordinary rules of the world. Her presence seemed to change the very fabric of the night, making it even more unsettling. John was captivated by her, drawn in by her mesmerizing gaze. He could not shake off the feeling that there was something more to her, something that lay beyond the realm of the ordinary, something that belonged to the world of the supernatural. Little did John know, this encounter was merely the overture to a symphony of terror. As dawn broke, John found himself ensnared in the tendrils of a waking nightmare. His fascination with the enigmatic woman, like a moth drawn to a flame, had grown into an obsession. Their encounters, frequent and filled with an uncanny allure, were a paradox of exhilarating fear and captivating allure. It was as though he was entranced, bewitched by her ethereal beauty that was shrouded in an enigmatic aura. The strange incidents that occurred around her, however, were unsettling. The inexplicable chill that seemed to shadow her, the peculiar pallor of her skin under the moonlight, and her eyes, oh those eyes, that held an ageless wisdom and a predatory glint. All these anomalies whispering in the back of his mind that something was amiss, were drowned by the deafening roar of his fascination. But nothing could have prepared him for the horrifying revelation that lay in wait. The night he stumbled upon her in her most primal state, feeding would be etched in his mind forever. The gruesome sight, a tableau of pure terror, was a stark contrast to the serene beauty he was accustomed to. The woman he was drawn to, the woman he thought he knew, was a creature of the night, a vampire. Her ruby-red lips, usually so inviting, were now stained with the scarlet essence of life, making them look like a grotesque parody of her usual self. The sight of her elongated fangs, glinting in the dim light as they tore through flesh, was a chilling sight that made his blood run cold. His heart pounded in his chest like a wild drum, his mind a whirlpool of terror and disbelief. Every fiber of his being screamed at him to flee, but his feet felt as heavy as lead, rooted to the spot by fear and shock. In the cruel light of revelation, John found himself trapped in a dance with death. He was entangled in a web of horror, his life intertwined with a creature that was as mesmerizing as it was deadly. Reality had turned into a nightmare and there was no waking up. In the game of predator and prey, fear is the deadliest weapon. Our protagonist, John, understands this all too well as he finds himself in a desperate bid to escape the vampire's clutches. Each moment is a breathless dance with death as he skirts the edge of the abyss, the vampire's icy breath on his neck a constant reminder of the relentless pursuit. In the eerie silence of the dead of night, every small sound echoes like a death knell, amplifying John's terror. The rustle of leaves underfoot, the hoot of a distant owl, the sinister whisper of the wind, each becomes a chorus of horror, a testimony to his isolation. The chase is a cruel game of cat and mouse, a contest of wits and endurance. John's heart pounds like a frantic drummer, matching the tempo of his flight. His breath comes in ragged gasps, a testament to his fear and exertion. His legs ache with the strain, but he dares not stop, dares not surrender to the weariness that threatens to consume him. There are moments when he believes he has eluded his pursuer, brief instances of respite that are quickly shattered by the chilling realization that the vampire is always just a step behind. 
Fear is a relentless taskmaster, pushing John beyond his limits, forcing him to summon reserves of courage and strength he didn't know he possessed. In the face of certain death, he discovers a primal instinct for survival, an indomitable will to live. But the vampire is an ancient predator, patient and relentless. It revels in the chase, thrives on the fear it instills. For it, the night is a playground, the darkness its ally, and it is far from tired. John's desperate escape is a symphony of suspense, a testament to the human spirit's indomitable resolve to survive. It's a chilling reminder that in the world of the supernatural, the ordinary man is often the underdog, thrust into a deadly game where the odds are stacked against him. But the night was far from over, and the hunter was far from tired. In the heart of darkness, the final act of our grim ballet unfolds. The stage is set for a confrontation unlike any other. Our protagonist John stands resolute, a beacon of determination against the looming terror. He's locked in a deadly dance with the vampire, a creature as ancient as time itself, a being of unimaginable ferocity. It's a clash of mortal man against immortal beast, the stakes higher than they've ever been. The air is thick with tension, a palpable force that sends shivers down your spine. Fear and anticipation intertwine, creating a chilling symphony that echoes in the stillness. It's the calm before the storm, the moment before the world erupts into chaos. John, despite the fear gnawing at the edges of his courage, remains steadfast. He's a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity, a testament to our ability to stand against the odds. His eyes, glimmering with resolve, never waver from the creature before him. This is his fight, this is his moment. The vampire, on the other hand, is a beast of nightmares, its presence an icy chill against the backdrop of the night. It's a creature of darkness, its very existence a testament to the horrors that lurk in the shadows. Its eyes, glowing with an unholy light, hold an eternity of malice. It is the embodiment of fear, the embodiment of death. The battle that ensues is one for the ages. It's a dance of death, a whirlwind of motion, each move as deadly as the last. It's a symphony of fear and determination, of life and death. It's a testament to the power of the human spirit, a testament to our ability to fight, to survive. The tension rises, the fear mounts, but through it all, John remains unyielding. He fights with everything he has, his every move a testament to his resolve. He's the embodiment of courage, the embodiment of hope. But even in the face of death, humanity's will to survive burns brightest. As the sun pierced the inky veil of night, John stood alone, a survivor amidst the ruins. The dawn broke, casting long eerie shadows that danced across the desolate landscape. It was a new day, a new beginning, but for John, the echoes of the night's horrors still resonated, an unending melody of fear and survival. In the aftermath of the chilling confrontation, the land bore scars of a battle well fought. John too carried his own, not all of them visible. He had escaped the clutches of the vampire, but at what cost? The once vibrant man was now a shell of his former self, the sparkle in his eyes replaced by a haunting emptiness. The encounter had left him scarred, both physically and mentally, forever altering the course of his life. The vampire, the creature of the night, was seemingly vanquished, but in the world of the supernatural, things were seldom as they seemed. The absence of the monster did not mean its demise. John knew this. He knew that in the realm of shadows and darkness the line between life and death was often blurred. With every creak of a door, every whisper of the wind, John felt the icy fingers of dread clutching at his heart. The paranoia, the constant looking over his shoulder, was a heavy burden to bear. He was a prisoner in his own mind, chained by the fear of the vampire's return. Yet, amidst the uncertainty, John found a glimmer of resolve. He had survived the night, he had stared into the eyes of the beast and lived to tell the tale. Maybe, just maybe, he could face whatever came next. It was a small comfort, but comfort nonetheless in the face of the unknown. In the harsh light of dawn, one question lingered. Was the nightmare truly over, or had it just begun? For John, the dawn was not just a symbol of a new day, but a reminder of the uncertain future that lay ahead.